This is Rock Slapping Champions. Player 1, playing Raynor. We have Connor. And player 2, playing Vorzud. We have Mr. Random. So let's have a look at the masteries while the players get set up. Raynor has gone for 30 points into the research cost reduction, 30 points in the Banshee airstrike cooldown, 3 points into the mech attack speed mastery here. So we should be expecting a mech centric build from Raynor. Vorzun, on the other hand, has gone for 5 points into the Dark Pylon range, 25 points into the Black Hole, 30 points into the Shadow Guard duration, and then we have a 13 17 split into the Chrono Boost Spear for doing energy mastery. Well, I don't really like the Dark Pile on Range Mastery, I don't find it to be very useful. It might be better to put the points into the Black Hole Duration here. And the new recommendations for the Vorzun splits here is to go for the 17 points, or go for the full points into the Spear of the Dune Mastery here, unlike the 17 points. Now, one question I commonly get for Rock Stopping Champions is, can I submit myself to Rock Stopping Champions? People keep asking if they can submit themselves for Rock Stopping Champions. And the answer is yes, this replay was actually submitted by the Vorzun player because they realized they were playing like a true rock slapping champion during this game. You can submit your own replays as long as it is not scripted and as long as you're not really trolling your ally and you know, as long as you're actually making an active effort to play and win the game, then yes, there is nothing wrong you submitting your own episodes and I have submitted myself as well as part of it and I believe there are a few other submitters as well in the past that have submitted themselves because they realized that their play was not really as optimal as it could be during a game. Now Vorazun is basically going to have to be able to deal with this first attack order that's coming up and one of the things that can happen is people tend to tunnel vision into something that they want to do, so they come up with a plan, in this case it's Forza player, had a plan right at the start of the game as to what kind of build they wanted to do, and it just turns out that the enemy composition or the mission that they got if they're randoming into a mission didn't really suit the strategy that they wanted to try and do. And you will see exactly what I mean by that in just a little bit as the first attack wave has started to spawn. You can see we're dealing with the Zerg composition, and as soon as Vorazun goes to engage this attack wave, we'll actually know what the enemy composition is. We have a bunch of Shadow Guards over here, and they attack, and you can see that the enemy composition is the Explosive Threats composition, which is the old classic Swarmy Zerg composition. Now, the way this composition works is that it has Banelings and it has Scourge, which are the suicide units in the composition, but it also has a lot of Swarm Hosts and just a lot of small little units that are just very annoying. And that is why the composition is called Swarmy, because it tends to swarm the commander's units with just large numbers of units, and it's just a very annoying composition to deal with. You can see the Vorzu has already put down one target, and in production, we have a fleet beacon coming out as well. So we have, we're expecting some kind of stargate tech, potentially void rays. But we're also expecting some quick upgrades onto some of Vorzun's army. So this is going to be the Corsairs and the Oracles. Now, over here we have another attack wave coming up, and that attack wave will actually end up contacting Raynor. The Shadow Guard was used to clear the bonus objective, leaving Raynor's army basically to fend for themselves, and they are not going to stand a chance. But we have a very nice Banshee airstrike right on top of the attack wave, and that Banshee airstrike. We're going to clearing out that attack wave without any problem whatsoever. We see the fleet beacon is out now, and Vorazu is already starting to produce the Corsair and getting the cloak upgrades for these Corsairs. So these upgrades are really important, and we have now some more Stargates coming out. So we have basically three more Stargates queued up for Vorazu and some gateways, and you can see that Vorazu is planning to tech up into an air army here. Now, Vorazun has done the most important part, which is take her Nexus and those assimilators. So Vorazun's economy is pretty much up and running. Raynor is a little bit behind on his economy here. I think he's he built his command center right on site. He is getting an orbital command center, which is really good. But he's gonna put he's gonna need to put down some more orbital command centers before anything happens here. We have Vorazun already using another Shadow Guard and now a time stop. And the Shadow Guard will be able to deal a good amount of damage to Amon's base. And you can see here, Vorazun is doing all the right things. He's pushing into Amon's bases aggressively. So this is not by any means a bad player, but this is this is what happens sometimes when you tend to tunnel vision into a certain strategy, and you know you kind of want to do a meme build, and that meme build will just completely backfire on you. So you'll see what happens over here just as soon as Vorazun starts to get her army compositions out. You can see the Vorazun is producing Oracles and Corsairs, so she's going for full air army, going for the armor upgrade as well, and going for the disruption web upgrade. 
The disruption web, really, really good. Armor upgrades, probably not as useful because, again, when you're dealing with swarming compositions, you have scourge of bailings that just deal a lot of single, single hit damage. And armor is going to take off one damage from each, each of those scourge, which is really not enough to keep your army alive. And you see here the Shadow Guard does end up getting picked up. We have another Shadow Guard here that's just killing some of the Zerglings. But you can see where the problem lies here is that there's just a lot of units that are very, very problematic for Warzone to deal with. And now Warzone has a bunch of Oracles. She switches on the Pulsar Beam. I want to try and clear this out, but I can't. This is a swarming composition. Another Banshee Airstrike comes down. And that Banshee Airstrike will end up cleaning out the Zerglings. But these Pulsar Beams have actually. are actually struggling. When, when it comes to dealing with some of the enemy units in this composition. And this is where Warzone will have some struggle. Now Warzone can actually compensate for that by just focusing a little bit more on the Oracles and building a few more Oracles to be able to handle the ground part of the attack wave because the air part of the attack wave can actually get melted by just a few Corsairs and a Black Hole. But again, remember that Warzone's mastery allocations, there are five points of the Dark Pylon range those points have been taken away from that precious black hole duration mastery which might actually be very, very impactful in the later stages of the game where you actually need to have as much time as possible when it comes to dealing with at least the ground force of the attack wave because your oracles are not able to clean them out in time because again you have lots of units and it just takes time to kill them off. You can see the Vorzune is giving some advice here. You're gonna need some fire bats and vikings and Warzone is telling a Raynor ally the Vipers and Danes will wreck your shit if you don't. So, Warzone clearly knows what the enemy composition is. Warzone knows how to counter the enemy compositions, but they have tunnel vision into this one. Probably kind of a meme build, they wanted to have some fun. It was probably not ideal for this kind of composition. We have a few Centurions here to try and stall this attack wave. And you can see where the problem lies now in this strategy is that this is a second black hole that was used. Maybe because the mastery allocation was not set as well, but just definitely not enough oracles in Vorzun's army to handle the ground composition here. We have a total of seven oracles right now that is not nearly enough to deal with the ground forces that will be fighting against Vorzun's army. Next attack wave has started to spawn and again you can see that Vorzun has used a, some, a bunch of stasis wards to draw the Zerglings into their little trap here, but again, those stasis wards have actually drained some of the precious energy from these oracles, and as a result now, these, these zerglings can just keep moving forward after they have actually finished from the timer of the stasis ward. The stasis calibration upgrade has not been researched, it's, it's on the way, but these stasis wards are not nearly as useful as it would be in some of these zerglings to actually manage to get away here and nibble away at this temple, dealing a little bit of damage, not too much, it's just a small bit of damage, but again, you can see that these stasis wards are actually slowing down Vorzun's army and taking away that very valuable energy from Vorzun's oracles. And these oracles are going to be struggling. We have another time stop available and this will buy Vorzun some time to handle the attack wave without using any of the other call downs. Also our beam is active over here but unfortunately Vorzun did not click forward so there's a little bit of wasted energy there. There's maybe about 5 energy wasted on each of those oracles and now Vorzun's oracles have run out of energy completely. It's just a matter of time before chaos will start to ensue as Warzone runs out of complete energy on all of our oracles and will not be able to handle the attack wave that will be coming up. We have a few more gateways here and these gateways now, Warzone has realized that there is a problem and the Titanic is heading towards an iceberg. So what she's doing now is she's putting down a few more gateways to try and provide her with some centurions to just stall the ground part of the attack wave while her Corsairs work away at the air composition and the Oracles work away at the ground comp here. We have some more disruption webs coming up here and the disruption webs are decent. The, the Corsairs do end up focus firing down the one Viper, but now there's another attack wave from the back line here. Again, there will be more Scourge here. Scourge do end up dying before they end up hitting the air composition here. A few more Scourge coming here and they do end up actually contacting some of these Oracles. And Oracles again, using their Pulsar Beam. And now the Oracles have actually run out of energy completely. The Swarm Hosts are basically left to do pretty much nothing. We have another Viper over here. The Vipers are getting harassed a little bit. There is one random Overseer, but not before it gets picked up before the Vipers can actually cast a Parasitic Bomb onto this army. And this is going to be the other thing that Vorzu will have to be careful of. She'll have to keep splitting and she'll have to be very, very careful with how she engages some of these compositions. The best way is to use the Black Hole to just trap these Vipers in and just click A-click them with your Corsairs to clean them up 
before they get out of that black hole because that could be very, very catastrophic. Warzone has a good number of Corsairs right now. 12 Corsairs are more than enough to be able to kill off the attack weapon because they get bonus damage as well to the light units, as you can see here. And especially because they're cloaked and they have a high weapon attack speed, they actually end up shredding the Zerg compositions pretty well. Warzone right now should just basically be producing oracles. You can see this is what Warzone is doing. Just focusing on the oracles, trying to get as many oracles out as possible. But again, she is going for the armor upgrades here. And those armor upgrades provide a huge gas sink and it's taking away valuable resources away from Warzone's army. You can see here we have some stasis wards as well coming out. And again, these stasis wards are fine, especially now that we have the stasis calibration upgrade, that Warzone will be able to get a little bit more value from it. Again, using the Pulsar Beam to try and take out the bonus objective, but now decides to recall her army back. But this Pulsar Beam has basically all been utilized on pretty much all of these oracles right now. And again, we have some more damage output here from some of the, from the Student Fish Hybrid. It's just trying to focus down some more of these oracles. We have some one, another bunch of Scourge here that end up hitting as well. Some of these oracles. Oracles have taken a little bit of damage. And this hybrid now is going to be left uncontested until the oracle, the, until the Corsairs actually end up cleaning that up. And again, Bor and now Raynor is actually back into position as well. And I think that is basically just a remnant of the attack wave. Vorzu so far hasn't really lost very much. He's sitting at about 18 Centurions lost, but those Centurions are a mineral dump right now. So that is not a problem for Vorzu. Vorzu doesn't really care about these Centurions. But at some point, she is going to be really struggling with the Oracle. And she needs to keep producing Oracle. But she's producing Corsairs to, I think, handle the hybrids. The hybrids are not really big of a deal. Just drop them into the middle of the drop a black hole right on top of them. And that will basically handle the, the hybrids okay. without any issues. But these Corsairs now are, are fine. It's the Oracles that need a lot more assistance. And now the next Void Thrasher has spawned. And these Corsairs and Oracles are going to be trying to attack it. We have the Pulsar Beam enabled from these Oracles as well. And that Pulsar Beam is going to be used to take out the Void Thrasher. It's draining a lot of valuable energy from these, these Oracles. But they are switched on and off. And now Pozu wants to push into Amon's base. Which is usually fine if you have a good number of oracles, but Warzone again is sitting only at 26 oracles, and again, remember that you are dealing with a swarmy composition. When you have swarmy compositions, it means that you need a lot of energy stored up onto your oracles and bank, unless you just max out your army in terms of oracles, so that you do not end up taking unnecessary damage from the Scourge, and also have enough energy to be able to handle the attack wave. The attack wave will be coming up right now. All the Scourge are right here with an Overseer and a bunch of Scourge end up contacting the attack wave, uh, contacting Vorzun's army with a bunch of parasitic bombs right on top of her army. And pretty much everything has died over there or been emergency recalled back to the Nexus. 33 Centurions have died and the rest of Vorzun's army are just running away right now and a few more Centurions also end up getting caught up by that attack wave. Vorzun is not out of the woods yet. She has to go and deal with this attack wave and using the stasis wards to try and catch this wave. This would have been okay at the start, like if she used her stasis wards to try and trap these hybrids because that is where the value really comes in. Trying to deal with the zerglings with stasis wards is probably not a wise idea. It drains way too much energy. Hybrid Dominator is upset. Cast some more Plasma Blast right on top of Warzone's army. Warzone has lost a total of 15 Corsairs and there is another Viper over there and it has also casted some more abilities. Yeah, 15, Corsairs, 15 Oracles have died so far, but Warzone has managed to actually put this... regain control of this. But not before she's lost, she's down to like 18 oracles right now. She needs to quickly build more and more oracles. And yes, she's building 4 oracles at a time. And now also going for the shield upgrades. And again, the same idea is the shield upgrades not very useful when you're dealing with this kind of composition. And in general for Warzone, unless you intend on supply capping your army, and you really have nothing else to spend your gas on, uh, you probably do not want to invest in your shield upgrades, let alone your armor upgrades, because you want that gas spent towards your towards building an army and even though Warzone is sitting at about 170 supply right now 15 of that supply like 15 centurions are in her army and you can see now one of the main problems here with Amon's vipers is that when they drop they can actually skill you from orbit when they are unselectable and unclickable and untargetable so the viper does end up getting off its parasitic bomb on top of Warzone's army and Warzone has now lost a total of 21 oracles and 13 Corsairs from that next drop attack as well. This is going to be somewhat chaotic because Warzone's army now is getting much much weaker and 
this is going to be a problem. Now we have another attack wave on the way. That's the second of the four drop attacks in this mission. There's going to be another one now coming up. Okay, we have another drop attack here. Viper casts another Parasite Bomb, and now Vorzoon's army has completely clumped up as, as she's trying to engage those Zerglings. And there's going to be just so much carnage right now. Vorzoon has lost 25 Oracles and 17 Corsairs. And I think this one might be okay. There was no Parasitic Bombs casted on Vorzoon's army because she was not actually in position. Now she wants to go and engage this last final... Not the final attack wave, but this is the, this is the final one before this next double Thrasher spawn. She wants to get the position here, she'll have to be careful. She, if she pushes into a bunch of Vipers with that kind of clumped up army, she will end up losing pretty much her entire attack force here. So attack wave has been sighted, and now we have a time stop for Warzone. Warzone is just going to be pushing right through with the Corsairs. And you just see how quickly these Corsairs just end up shredding this army, because they just deal bonus damage to light, so no need even for the Black Hole. And now, Corsair, and now the Oracle is using their Pulsar Beams to clear whatever is left of this attack wave. So this attack wave has been cleared, but you see the problem now, no energy left on these oracles and they have to deal with the thrasher spawn as well as the hybrid spawn as well as the double attack wave spawn and Warzoon is just trying to produce some more, do some more oracles right now. She wants to make sure that she has enough oracles to handle it and again going for the shield upgrades. That is not a wise idea, especially because she's not supply cap right now. And Warzoon does have a few Centurions on the front line here to make to just stall this attack wave. But now this is a massive attack wave. Three Vipers in this attack wave. These Vipers will be more than happy to cast Parasitic Bombs. And Warzoon's army jumps right into the middle of that Parasitic Bomb and is taking so much damage over here. That is basically all her army in the red. 28 Oracles have died with 17 Corsairs, and this is not the last attack wave. This is just the first one. There's gonna be a hybrid attack wave right behind this. and. These hybrids are not going to be very happy with Warzone's army. It's going to be filled with hybrid dominators and tuna fish hybrids. And these things are going to be dealing with so much damage to Warzone's army. That is the attack wave here. It has spawned. There's going to be some Scourge as well. Scourge goes and makes straight a beeline for Warzone's army. And hybrid dominator Plasma Blast as well deals so much damage to Warzone's army. Now the hybrid dominator is sitting right underneath Warzone's army and casts Storm, even killing off. Now Warzone has lost 30 Oracles and 20 Corsairs. And there's another Storm right there. Cleaning up whatever is left of some of those oracles. 35 oracles have died right now. And there is another Plasma Blast as well. And I think these this hybrid does end up getting cleaned up by these oracles. But not only after so much carnage and a few aberrations over here for some reason. But Warzone now has to deal with this Thrasher. As well as that, there's another attack wave that's coming up from behind as well. There will be one more attack wave coming up. And again, there's the attack wave spawned. A bunch of banelings, they're not really too much of a problem just yet. Some aberrations are harassing Warzone a little bit. Raynor uses a Banshee airstrike to help this failing ally right now. And there is also a random tuna fish hybrid that is attacking Warzone's Nexus or her expansion. And this is the attack wave right now. Raynor does tactical jump into this and he does end up taking out a good chunk of that attack wave. But now Warzone is going to move in for the final attack wave on this mission. And there are a lot of Scourge, a lot of Vipers. Scourge make just instant contact with these Oracles. Parasitic bombs from behind from these Vipers. And Warzone has pretty much lost 47 Oracles, 27 Corsairs. She's basically been reset down to basically no Oracles left. And just four random Void Rays that were made as an emergency. But that is a Temple Defended. And that is GG.